today was the commitment to faith and love in action, which is what you were talking about, Adrian. And it, it occurred to me that whether or not we ask God to direct our day in the morning when we get up, that God is present and working in our lives. And while we can't be sure what the day is going to bring, we can be certain that we'll have the opportunity to serve God and others at some point during the day. Elijah and Jesus and Paul ask their listeners to rely on faith and God's love for them to direct them into what God has planned for them. Each asks for the listeners to respond to God's love by saying yes with their hearts and their actions. In life, we often find that we can't go back. They talked about not being able to go back and we can't go back. Uh, in fact, once our eyes are opened and we can see we can't unsee, and once we know something, we really can't unknow it. <laughs> you can't go back. Elijah, Elisha, their names are so close. Elisha, after his meeting with Elijah, went home changed and ready for the calling that God had had for him. Elisha needed to go back home and kiss his parents and say goodbye, but when he did, he didn't go back as a farmer. He went back as a person who was changed and who was going in a new direction, on a new path. His boots were on the ground, and he was accepting his call and his new life. In fact, he slaughtered the oxen that he had been uh, taking across the fields and plowing, and, and 12 yoke, that's 24 oxen. So there were a lot of them. And he slaughtered them and he fed them to the people. And what he cooked the meat on was the, the, um, the wood and the straps for the yoke. So, you know, he really shut the door on his old life, on his personal life, and opened the door to his calling and his service of others. Because he fed the oxen to the people. He had accepted his calling and taken action in that direction. And he was prepared to live into the new thing that God was calling him to. In the gospel story, Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem for the final time. So he had been transfigured, and he was heading to Jerusalem where he was going to be crucified. And he was pur purposeful, and he was focused. And the time for you know, discernment was over. He was at the place where his, with his followers where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. Jesus made it clear to them what it meant to be in for the calling that he had. They'd be required to get out of their comfort zones, and they'd be required to uh, get used to things that they weren't used to. And he said, there's going to be lots of uncertainty. And in fact, they'd need to be also like farmers who, when they put their hand to the plow, didn't look back. And which I don't know how many people have ever farmed or plowed or anything, but I'm going to assume, because I've never actually plowed anything, but I am going to assume that any time, even in you know, the 21st century, if you are looking backwards while you're trying to plow forward, I think that would be dangerous, especially if you're on a tractor. I'm just saying. I don't know if that would be, be less dangerous than if you had 24 oxen, but somehow you can't go forward and be looking back over your shoulder. You get on the wrong track. You get off your course. In his letter to the Galatians, Paul called the Christians there to live into the new thing, the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel. And he, and he said to them, stop trying to use the old laws to govern your actions. He assured them that through the Holy Spirit, their faith, God would govern their hearts. In all three of the readings today, I hear people being asked the question, are you in? Are you in? Are you ready for the rubber to meet the road? Are you, are you in with your boots on the ground? Elijah and Jesus and Paul all talk about doing a new thing. And that's something we hear about a lot in scripture, Old Testament, New Testament. God is always doing a new thing. God is always bringing about new life, new life in the scriptures, in the church, 
in our lives, in the world. In Isaiah 43, God says, Behold, I do a new thing. In the gospel, Jesus makes it clear what it meant to follow him, going in a different direction, maybe sometimes where you don't want to go. It may not always mean living in your comfort zone, sometimes going forward and not looking back. For the Christians that Jesus addressed and for Elisha, putting the rubber to the road meant significant life changes. They were being called to leave their families behind, leave their daily lives behind. And some folks are still called to that. And you know, at different times in our lives, we may be called to that for whatever period of time or whatever. But most of the time, we are called to these, uh, the ministry in our daily life. And uh, sometimes in ways that we might not even think of as, you know, ministry. But when we follow Jesus, we also get pushed out of our comfort zone sometimes, right? Or we get led in a direction. And we can trust that God has us, right? God doesn't bring us to where we are just to drop us off. Because our God is a God of provision. God equips us and makes us ready to be serving in whatever calling he has. We grow into what God calls us to do with God's help. And Paul's message to love one another and to not practice that whole uh, you know, uh, list of things, uh, envy and hate and selfishness and, and all those other things, uh, drunkenness and, and things like that, he says. That can make us reflect on our lives. Is there anything we need to change are there ways that we might be causing disharmony in our own lives that we need to look at? And do we see the presence of the fruit of the Spirit in our daily life? Sometimes it's really small things. I don't know. Did you ever envy somebody at work? You know, maybe they have like a better office or a better wardrobe or a better paycheck. <laughs> so, right? so maybe sometimes, you know, being a disciple could start with us thanking God for that person's good fortune. And maybe us trying to relate to that person instead of comparing the appearance of their life to our own. That could be out of our comfort zone. So, so, I had a, so for me, not too long ago, uh, this happened. And uh, this was one of the, I got popped out of my comfort zone a little bit one day. And um, so it was raining. It was about a month ago, probably. It was raining, and I was in my work clothes. I had high heels on, and, and, I, was, uh, and I was in a hurry, too. So it was raining, and I was in a hurry, and I was dressed up. And I ran into the gas station down here for gas. And you know, it's all covered. So I wasn't getting wet at the time. But anyway, so I was pumping my gas. You know, my car's over here. And I turned behind me and there's like pumps behind you, right? You know how the cars line up for self-serve. And so um, I looked behind, you know, my car and there was a car and the guy was kind of parked at a weird angle and he wasn't really pumping the gas. And I thought to myself, oh, there must be something wrong with that guy's car. So I said, is it dead? Because he was sitting right there. <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, yeah. And I said, man, that really stinks. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry I got that going on today, right? And I, and I turn around and I start <laughs> Right? And the thing is, it took me about two seconds to be convicted on that. I said to myself, right? What did you just say? Did you just tell that guy that stinks and then turn and look the other way? You know, <laughs> Yeah, I did. So now I'm having an argument with myself. I'm like, oh, but it's raining, and I'm in a dress, and I'm in a hurry. I got things to do. So I ask myself, you know, are you in? Are you in? Are you going to put your money where your mouth is? And I had to think about that for a second. And so I looked back over at him, and I said, you know, can I help you? Do you need, you know, you need me to jump your car? <laughs> And that was the place of commitment to faith and action. And it was a very small thing, and it was, you know, but, but that was a place where, you know, my boots hit the ground. Now, maybe I wouldn't be able to go and get on with my daily business of life right in that moment, but that's what we're called to. That's a part of loving our neighbors as, as you know, we love ourselves and as we love God. It was an instant of having to put my hand to the plow and not look back because I could not exactly help this guy while I was thinking about whether my heels were getting wet, right? <laughs> you have to look forward and just do what you're doing and be in the present moment. And, and so, you know, I had to make that commitment. 
And uh, was it comfortable? No, in that moment it wasn't. And especially looking at my own thinking and behavior, it was not comfortable at all. But there it was. And I think that that is a part of, you know, when Paul talks about being in the flesh, I think, you know, that's a part of it. We wrestle with that stuff. Is it doing, is it about doing the right thing and getting a reward or finding favor with Jesus? No, it's not about that at all. Jesus loves us first. God loves us first. And we receive the Holy Spirit. So we're saved and we're made whole by God's grace that's poured out on us. And because of that, and in response to that, we try and love God and others as we love ourselves. It isn't about satisfying God. God does not, you know, God doesn't need us to satisfy God. It's about, he loves being in a relationship with us, but, but God doesn't need that. It's about responding to the love that we receive all day, every day from God. <coughs> and our just being aware that it's right to help others is because of the glorious love that God shows us 24-7. It's the Spirit's leading. And then God gives us the power to overcome our self-centered thinking. So I could say, can I help you? You know, and, and that is, you know, when we're thinking about ourselves, God gives us the power to overcome that, to crucify the flesh, so to speak, in Paul's words, and go outside of our comfort zone to offer other people help when they're in need. The Holy Spirit abides in us, God loves us, and it gives us the power to make good choices and right choices. Do we always make the choice? No. No, many times uh, we don't. But also many times we do. And a lot of times we don't even wrestle with it. We just jump right in and, you know, it's not even a thought. So, but God's love is always calling us, calling us to love. In big ways and small ways, God is always calling us and asking, are you in? Last weekend, as Adrian said, several of us went to the uh, annual Synod Assembly, and, and they did. They talked about unleashing the Spirit. And, um, and, and, you know, as the body of Christ, we're always being called to new life. And as Adrian, you know, pointed out, so much about church has changed. There are a lot of um, options. It used to be that everybody just went to church on a Sunday. And now there's a lot of things that, you know, struggle for our attention. And uh, the culture has changed in a lot of ways. So for, you know... For some of us, church has changed in a lot of ways over the years. But like the readings today, even when what we know is changing, there are a lot of new things going on in the church as a whole and in our church here. And God is calling us to be a part of that. Because God is always doing a new thing. And uh, Adrian mentioned some of the new ministries. We have a lot of, you know, uh, ministries that have been going on for a long time and we have some some new things going on as a matter of fact after the service today we're going to go out and bless the garden for anybody who has a couple of minutes to uh, go out there and join us at blessing the new garden which is uh, uh, the food for that is going to go to the food pantry we had this first movie night which I heard went really well there's a lot of new things going on we're doing spiritual formation on Wednesday nights but there's also a lot of things that have been going on for you know forever that are the um, Friday ladies and the um, spaghetti dinners and can't even mention them all, there's so many. We do a lot of great work. We just started hosting, uh, supporting a new Boy Scout troop. So God is always planting vision for new life in us and in the church. And we can see new things happening all the time. Through time, God has always called God's followers to put their hand to the plow and not look back. As we go through the week this week, maybe we can pay attention and listen for the Spirit's leading in our lives. Where do we notice God at work in the world and in our communities and in our own lives and the lives of others? Where do we see and feel the fruits of the Spirit? And where are we being called to faith in action? And finally, the big question we can ask ourselves is, are we in? Amen. Amen. Amen.